Hey guys, welcome back to ASAP USMLE. Today we're going to be talking about the most common biostats equations you'll find in USMLE. So, highly recommend that you pause this video, grab a piece of paper and a pen, uh, some colored markers if you prefer, and just draw it out with me. So, we're going to start off making this table with four parts. We're going to label those four parts A, B, C and D in this order. On top of that table, we will write disease, and on the side, we'll write test. That disease status can be positive or it can be negative. The test result could be positive or it could be negative. Now, as it's labeled on the table, if you have a patient who actually has a disease and tested positive as well, then this is a true positive result. The same way, negative and negative, if this patient does not have a disease and the test result was negative, in fact, then you have a true negative. Alternatively, if this patient has the disease and the test was negative, then this is a false negative test result. And if they do not have the disease and the test was positive, there's a discrepancy, so we have a false positive test result. Now, the reason this table is so important is because so many things can be calculated from it. If you use these two values in this direction, this column is going to be sensitivity. This column is going to be specificity. Now, the rows, top row, is going to be positive predictive value. The lower row is going to be negative predictive value. Okay, now we've got this table all labeled up. So let's uh, go ahead and do the equations. Sensitivity is the probability that a person who has a disease does in fact test positive. So we're going to take the true positive, which is what we want to truly measure, and we're going to divide that by the sum of both true positive plus false negative. Specificity is going to be the probability that a person who doesn't have a disease does in fact get a negative test result. So again, we're going to be taking the true negative, the true value, and we're going to be dividing that by the true negative plus false positive using the columns as I stated. Now using the rows, we're going to calculate positive predictive value and negative predictive value. In positive predictive value, we're checking the probability that a person who tested positive actually has the disease. So we're doing rows this time. So we're doing true positive over the sum of true positive plus false positive. We're doing positives here. So negative predictive value will be the opposite. It's the probability that a person who tested negative actually doesn't have the disease. So again, we're going to start with the true value, which would be true negative on top over true negative plus false negative. So another thing to know is that prevalence correlates directly with positive predictive value. So as positive predictive value goes up, prevalence goes up. As negative predictive value goes up, the opposite is true. It goes down. Over here, I'm going to add likelihood ratio. We can do a positive likelihood ratio or negative likelihood ratio. So likelihood ratio is going to be the probability of a patient with the disease actually testing positive over the probability of a patient without the disease testing positive. And for this, we're going to be doing 
um, sensitivity. over 1 minus specificity. In negative likelihood ratio, we're checking the probability of a patient with the disease testing negative over the probability of an individual without the disease testing negative. So we're going to do 1 minus sensitivity over specificity. All right, so now we're going to get to the good good stuff, good equations. So first off, we've got odds ratio, okay? This is associated with case series where it's important to know we care about disease status first, okay? This patient has the disease, and then we're going to figure out the relationship that this disease has with an exposure. So for this, the equation is just pretty, you know, you're just going to have to memorize it. There's really no trick. I just kind of remember, you know, to multiply the trues over the false. Next up is relative risk. This one is associated with cohort studies where we have, we start off with exposure. And usually we're going to see how that relates to development of a disease, possible development of a disease. So in case series, we start with disease status. In cohort, we start with exposure status. For cohort, uh, we are going to do A over A plus B divided by C over C plus D. Now I know this is a lot. But once you get this, everything else is going to be a derivative of basically this equation. So stay with me. Just kind of memorize that one. Uh, third, just know that relative risk reduction is just going to be 1 minus relative risk. Now, we have absolute risk. Absolute risk, I just kind of see it like a reduction. So I'm, I'm subtracting, right? And I just kind of base it off of this. So I take the top and instead of dividing, I just subtract. So I go A over A plus B minus C over C plus D. Another way I like to look at this because questions will ask differently. They might not give you a table. They might just uh, talk about people who have an exposure and people who don't have an exposure or have a medication and another, another group who's the control group or has a placebo. So I just kind of think of it, A, the first group is, is always going to be like the exposed group, the group that's taking the medication. And the other group, the C group, is going to be the non-exposed. Okay, they get, they're getting the placebo. Now we have absolute risk reduction. And for me, this is like A reverse reduction. And what I mean by this is, is exactly this, but the other way around. So we're starting with C over C plus D minus A over A plus B. And the opposite would be true. It would be like non-exposed minus exposed. Six is going to be number needed to treat. And seven, last one, is going to be number needed to harm. I like to start with harm first because it's a little easy, easier. It's 1 over AR. Now remember this because harm has AR in it. So 1 over AR. And so number needed to treat would be 1 over ARR, absolute risk reduction. So that is it. Those are the equations that you need to know. I know it looks like a lot. But as you see, the table tells you everything you need to know. So this is it for today. I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And I'll see you in the next one.